Hi everyone and welcome back to our fire team series. Previously we've worked on our scoreboard widgets and in this episode we're going to work on getting our find, screen, uh, find session screen loaded up at the menu so we can click on it, find our sessions and join our games. So let's get started. Okay so what we're going to do here is first of all go into our uh, main menu play screen. So in our menu UI, we have this play screen set up where we had quick match, host match, and find match. And currently we have find match button here, uh, triggering off our find match event, or function rather, in our game instance. Click on this. And here we are doing the find sessions uh, code, and we've got a call on sessions found. So we haven't actually tied this to anything. So we need to make sure we are tying this to something when we are get, using its call, so we know how to display these sessions so we're going to go over to our uh, play screen again and after we call find match here we are going to take the game instance link here and we're going to do bind event on sessions found update so and this is going to be populating a session sort of list um, so we'll drag out our event node here, custom event, and we call this one as display sessions. Okay, so we need to make some UI element here to allow us to um, display each of these individual sessions. So let's go ahead and add it over here onto the right hand side of this. So for this, I'm going to create a new widget. Okay, so we're going to go. Actually, uh, can we do it on the screen? Yeah, I think we'll do it on the same screen here. Why not? Okay, so in our cat panel here, we're going to add another border. And this border, we're going to size roughly what we want. And put it on over here on the right hand side by changing the anchors to the right hand side module here. I'm probably doing control and shift at the moment. And that allows me to automatically set the um, alignment and positioning of it to match the anchor. Um, and we can make this window a certain size we want it to have be. So we're going to go that way. Change the wire here. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. So what we'll do is round off these numbers. I don't like odd numbers like this. So we'll round it up to uh, 530. And this one's 800. There we are. I'm going to give it a little offset on the X as well. So minus 50 there. Actually minus 100. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this thing is going to be the container for all of our found sessions so in this border here we're going to have a well first of all let's change the background of it keep it black fine and we're going to add in a vertical box inside of it yep and this vertical box is going to have a heading up top saying like found sessions Two. uh oops. text there we are. And let's drag that into our book. And we should type in a name here. Sound. Space. There we are. Okay. Now, obviously you can design this however you like. Um, but totally up to you. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make this have a darker top. Or maybe the bottom here have a lighter bottom. Either way. So on this text here, we're going to wrap with a, another border. And we're going to change the colour of that border. Wash colour. Choose this one again. And then on the other border, the one we originally put in, I'm going to change it to be a little bit more see-through. To 0 0.5 instead. Okay. Looking good. Okay, so... The bit in the center here is the actual area where we're going to fill up the individual names of all the different sessions we have. So in this vertical box, we're going to have a border for the top, and then for the bottom bit here, we have a scroll list. Or scroll box. In this scroll box here, we're going to take to fill up the available space. So we're going to sizing here to... Oh, let's save. So that is what we need, and we need to make this scroll box here a variable because we need to be able to tell it to um, and use it to insert the found sessions. So tick is variable, and we'll just rename it here um, session list. 
so. Okay, so next we need to make up the individual sessions, uh, what they look like. So we're going to go back to our browser down here. We're going to create a new UI widget blueprint. And this will be um, main menu play green underscore found session. Bit of a mouthful, but it does help us uh, identify where this thing actually belongs. Okay, so in here we're going to get rid of our canvas panel to begin with. And we need to make it a button so we can actually click on it. So search for button and drag that into our thing here. And inside this button here, I'm going to have a horizontal box. Now we're having a horizontal box because I want to display the name of the room as well as the amount of players that are in there. So horizontal box there, fill up the available space by fill, fill. And we're just going to get rid of the padding around here too. And the button. We're going to make it have no background colour. So, I'll get rid of its padding here too. Okay, so in this horizontal box, we're going to have text. And that's going to be the name. So, we'll just put in up here the name of this thing. We'll put in txt underscore uh, session name. And your tick is variable. And this is going to be filled out, filling up the whole entire screen here. Next, we want to put in another text block, sorry. Um, this one, you can change the name of it to be txt underscore player count. And that's the amount of players we have. Okay, and that's basically what we've got to do here. Now, to just make sure this looks okay, we're going to go to change it from fill screen to desired on screen. And we're just going to actually, actually let's do custom on screen. Because then we can put in a value here to see how this looks. And so width here will be 530, which is the size of our session list box. And you see here, it's pushing these two to the top. So let's make these not the case. We'll just click on these and put them into vertically aligned center. And next, I quite like the look of the 100 height. So we're going to wrap this with a size box. we we'll wrap with this button. A size box and we're going to give it a height override of 100 width doesn't matter okay right um that would do so let's go back to our menu menu play screen and see how this looks in here first of all but before we code it in let's just see how it looks so session and there you go our player screen found session pop it in and there you go that's what it's going to look like so one thing I don't like too much is how tight the text is onto the edge here. So I'm going to go back to my original here and go to the buttons, hold the box. And just put a padding on here of like 10. Fuck that all in a little bit. You can see now like a little better there. Okay. Obviously you can do whatever you like for the style. You can do font, sizing, colour, whatever you want. You can do it there too. Okay. So let's delete this temporary one here and we're going to go to the graph and in here um oh sorry not graph the graph of the session this one here go to the graph of this one and on the variables here we're going to add the session later so we can type in the word session and in the variable type search for the word session again and you should see a blueprint session result on this we make it editable by clicking the little eyeball and exposed on spawn. Okay, and on construct, you're going to drag out this session. Get, and over here, you're going to open this up and on online session, you can get all this information from this session. So we're going to get the server name, which by default is the name of the Steam user who's host. Um, but obviously, if you're using dedicated servers and other systems you could also use it to set custom stuff you can't do that in just blueprint mode only so if you do want to have that ability you do need to make sure you're using the source version get that in there. so we get server name we're going to set that to our session name get. and do set text log that in and plug it there and also we'll do oh i put it in the player count so we have player count and we'll make sure that is ticked to be variable. 
that. Set text. Log this in. And from our session here, we can get the current players and max players. We've got both of these. So get max and get current. And we're going to do a format text to put these into a text field. Format text. And the way the format text node works is you put in curly brackets and a parameter name. So I'll use A. I'll put in space, forward slash space. And I'll put another curly bracket in for B, hit enter. But upon hitting enter, you'll see A and B will now appear as parameters, wildcard ones in that fact. So you can plug in any value into here and it will just insert it into the right place. So A will be current players and B will be max players. File and save that. Uh, and that's it. Now if you wanted to show other things like ping, for example, you can do as well. You can get the ping name, uh, the ping in microseconds if you want. Uh, it's up to you. But that'll do for this. Okay, so uh, next we're going to go back to our play screen. And we've got display sessions going on over here. And you've got this session array here. We do a for each loop. Plug this in. And on this array element, we're going to do loop body, create widget, and choose our session, found session. And we should be able to plug the array element into that session pin there. If you don't see the session pin, just go back into this widget and turn on instance editable and expose on spawn. Okay, so now we've created a widget, we need to add it to our session list. So drag out session list and do add. And we do add child. Okay, and that's it for here. The only other thing you may want to do is right at the start of the display sessions, you may want to clear the children out from that session list. So when you refresh it, you don't get duplicates. We get session list here to clear children and plug that in for the four each loop. Um, and that's it. Okay, so if I hit save there and go back to my main menu screen here and hit play. And wait for it to come up. Okay, so there we go. We've got a host screen and a client screen we can use. So we go host map. Uh, sorry, host map. And let me. Okay, host match. Um, and now go. I'm ready to go. Hit launch game, and that will launch into the match. There I am. And if I go over here, I go to find match and just wait for it to find the matches. We should hopefully see our one there is. And now we're going to make it click on it to go into the map. So let's go set up that click. So we're going to found session. And we're going to do the unclicked event for our button. Clicked. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say to our game instance, get game instance, and then cast to our fire team, or say called my game instance, there you go, and plug that in. And we're going to take it to tell it to join a session, well, which I don't have. So let's go into a game instance and set up the join session node. Custom event, join session. And the join session is going to want to know which session we want to join. So on the inputs of this, click on here, add new input, and we're going to call it session. And the type for this is going to be a blueprint session. And then all we do is get the player controller and tell it to join session and here it's going to ask you for the player controller which is this one so that's going to the wrong hole there there and on the search result that would be that session there too compile and there we go so now we just need to define what we do on success if we want to do something there we can do uh also if we want to do a, a, another message for in failure we can do that there too 
But we're not worried about that for now. We'll leave it this as is. So let's set up the join session on the uh, clicking uh, clicking the button. There's a button click, and on here we'll do join session. And this by our session value. Okay, let's do this a test now. Okay, so in our uh, do, 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 do. my mouse there, yeah. Race match, which side and the other one there. Okay, uh, launch game the map, and then on the other one, we do find match, wait for it to find the matches. Now, normally we would put in something like a, a little message on the screen, like a throbber saying it's searching for matches. We'll add all that in later on when we do final touches and finishing up. Right now, we're not bothered by that. And there you go, I've clicked and now I've joined the match. Okay. Now, when you join the match, you're going to see some errors that we need to fix. We need to fix the ability of our client to control. They have no control. And also, we need to tell our UI to update and reflect our new additional characters. Screen. So we'll handle that in the next part. There we have it. We can now find a game and join it. However, we've still not yet done as we still need to hook up a few things regarding the scoreboard and tie in a few loose ends in terms of bugs. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members supporting me and the project. And if you want to support me over there, head over to Patreon right now. The access to all my videos early before everyone else. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage, and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time, like the last time. You better get ready to rage.